The mansion worlds are designed to equalize the fact that people come from different levels of culture and civilization. Let's take, let's take a guy by the name of Arvan. That sounds fairly exotic. And Arvan is a citizen on the planet Anova. That's a real name. What's the real name? And Anova is planet number one in the system of Satania. We are number 606. In other words, Anova is the oldest planet in our local system. And Arvan is feeding into the Jerusalem cluster, just like we are. I don't think... Yes. Uh, and, and in the mansion world that Ruth is now suspended in, yes. uh, are there people coming or... Ben is waking up in the chamber adjoining Ruth Burton's deal. They're waking up together. And Ruth comes from this world and our man comes there. That's right. <laughs> and our man comes from world number one. He's a very retarded person. Or he would have skipped the mansion worlds. Ruth comes from Urantia and waking up on mansion world number one is par for the course. All 606 worlds feed into the mansion worlds or the higher levels or they have resurrection halls. Let's get the, Jeru the Jerusalem cluster in mind. You have in the center, this is an architectural cluster of physical worlds. In the center is Jerusalem, about 100 times the size of Urantia. Jerusalem has seven satellites, each of which is about ten times the size of Urantia. Mass of Jerusalem is not what you'd expect, so the gravity isn't oppressive. Each of these seven satellites have seven moons, and the mansion worlds are the seven moons encircling satellite number one. Got a picture? Fifty-seven worlds in all. You know, Heinz will be proud of that. <laughs> all 606 planets in Satania feed into mansion world number one. We're going to have a lot of strangers on mansion world number one. Lots of people won't speak English up there. In fact, just a, just a percentage of your ranchians will speak English up there. Now, we don't have to go through pulling these GI quartermaster issue Marancha bodies out of the pickle and laying them out on the slab awaiting Ruth's soul, etc. and so forth. I mean, have we got Ruth reassembled? Yes, yes. yes. she's still on the slab. Right. Well, let's reassemble her. I did that once today, and it's a pretty gory thing. I don't want to do it again. And Arvan is waking up in the adjoining chamber from Anova, world number one. Uh, very retarded specimen. Uh, it's the first time in over five million years that anyone from Anova has w waked up on the first mansion world. They usually skip the mansion world. You know, Arvan was, a, Arvan was a throwback Alpheus twin from Anova. Yeah, now normal people from Anova don't go through the mansion world. They wake up on Jerusalem where they have resurrection halls. Some of them wake up on the constellation because they have nothing to learn on the system level. As you go through these mansion worlds, it starts out with deficiency ministry getting rid of these horrible deficiencies of procrastination, equivocation, problem avoidance, unfairness, ease seeking, the things that are wrong with all of us. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's not like we shouldn't beat our wives or that sort of thing. Uh, morals and virtue, as preached from the pulpit, are pretty artificial. These are pretty fundamental. The purpose of the mansion worlds is to do for a human being what he should do for himself in the course of normal living. And the world of the dark. Yes. If he could settle himself in light and life, he wouldn't need the mansion worlds. Can that be done in one lifetime? Jesus did it. Yeah. 
Elijah did it. Yeah. Enoch did it. But who else? We don't know anybody else. <laughs> okay. It can be done, though. Uh-huh. It can be done. When they get through with deficiency ministry on the mansion worlds, then they start picking you up culturally. These mansion worlds variously compare with planetary mortal epics, such as the post-planetary prince epic, the post-edemic epic, I'm speaking of the cultural level, the post-magisterial sun epic, the post-bestowal sun epic, the post-teacher sun epic, settlement in light and life. And by now you're getting up to the last of the mansion worlds. So that when you graduate from the mansion worlds, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether you are uh, a literal Hottentot or a figurative Hottentot. I rate us as figurative Hottentots. Things have been evened up culturally. When you get to Jerusalem, you'll know which fork to use. You follow me? You won't lack Coofness. Fusion takes place usually, I, as I recall, it's on the fifth mansion world, am I right? Not, really. Not necessarily. Fusion can take place in this life. It can take place on any mansion world. It can take place at any point in the local universe career. But by and large, it happens on about the fifth mansion world. Death is not absolutely inevitable. Just damn probable. When you say death in Texas, you'll have to hedge the death slightly. You don't have to hedge on text. <coughs> if you fuse with your thought adjuster, point number one, the midwares are going to take you far enough away from your friends so that the fusion flash won't damage your friends. Because the physical repercussions of fusion uh, involve the dissipation of energy, heat, and so forth. And, on a planet settled in light and life, this takes place in a Maranch temple, where uh, you're warned ahead of time, you're going to fuse. And if you've got unfinished business, you plea for a stay of execution. <laughs> And they detach the thought adjuster because you can't leave the adjuster in there, it'll fuse. And you finish up your planetary assignments, and then you repair to the Marancha Temple, you send out announcements. I bet, uh, I hope they've gotten the place where they no longer feel them, you know, is this engraved or printed? <laughs> you send out announcements to your friends, and they all come there to see you graduate. And it's an occasion of great rejoicing. You're fusing, and you disappear in a flash. Do you suppose that the final vestiges of snobbishness in the era of light and life have to do with dying versus fusion? The author of the paper says he knows of no planet which is entirely free from death. And can't you hear Mrs. Van Asterbilt talking to Mr. Van Asterbilt and Claudia wants to marry a guy by the name of Smith and she sticks her nose up in the air and she says, hmm, the Smiths, they die. <laughs> On a world such as ours, we don't have any Marancha temples. And a physical structure would be damaged by the energy dissipated in fusion. See, the material body is consumed. That's a physical reality. When you suddenly oxidize that, a lot of heat is liberated. <coughs> Midwayers carry a fusion candidate, candidate up in the air far enough so that nobody gets hurt in the process. And the reason I think Elijah fused is because it says to those who witnessed such a transaction, the departing fusion, can, the departing fusion personality would appear to ascend to heaven in chariots of fire. That's the exact language from the Old Testament. In the event of fusion, you don't die. The adjuster seizes the immortal soul and transports it at adjuster velocity, which is in standard, to the first mansion world. Now, I suspect that the adjuster has sensed fusion. And for that matter, the personal guardian has sensed it, because believe me, such an individual would have a personal guardian. 
the, the slow-moving seraphim has probably taken off quite in advance to be ready with a soul so that everything is waiting for the fusion candidate when wham bang the adjuster slides into home plate with a cloud of dust and the soul clutched in his little sweaty paw you know what I mean and there you are and you wake up the same way only you wake up as a fused being I don't think you probably wake up on the first mansion world if you have achieved that inner quality of culture which enables you to fuse, I think you'd skip the whole seven mansion world. I would guess that fusion candidates would wake up on Jerusalem or maybe on the resurrection halls in the constellation. And you know, in worlds <coughs> settled in the advanced stages of light and life, fusion candidates almost completely miss the Maranchi existence. They almost go from the material existence directly into the spiritual existence. They wake up on Salvington as last stage Marantia beings. But of course, they then have to go down and teach in those levels that they didn't ascend through. There's another deal about the mansion worlds. If you don't have much to learn on the first mansion world, they don't make you go to work there. You may need the mansion worlds, but you may not need all seven. For example, let's take our favorite survival candidate. We've killed Ruth off so many times today that she won't mind being knocked off once more. Let's, let's take Ruth and compare her to, to uh, one of these Bushmen that we were talking about. What was this language for Bantu? Yeah, we get a Bantu tribesman, Stone Age guy, who makes it. He wakes up in another adjoining chamber. Now I think he's probably got to get a full course of sprouts on the first mansion world. But let's say that they check Ruth over and they say, well, kiddo, uh, it's like this. Uh, you need some of this mansion world business, but we don't think we've got, you, you need the first mansion world. So I have a, take 10 days off, which is 30 days of our time. So Ruth barges around and looks to see did Paul make it and so forth and, and is Fred uh, gonna make it you know and well of course a big question about Fred because he's basically so darn mean that it's a question of his meanness equal his virtue and so on very difficult balance to strike then she looks up her friends and uh, goes around and is pretty amazed to realize how little she knows about this mansion world because the papers didn't tell her very much they gave her maybe about a half of one percent or a tenth of one percent of what to expect and at the end of 30 days, she moves on to the second mansion world. That she leaves her body behind. Every time you move from one mansion world to another, you leave your body behind because the change is too great. You're down in the lower level of the material end of Marantia reality. It's not until you graduate from the mansion worlds that you get a Marantia form which, which is sufficiently typical of, a, of Marantia so that from there on they can re-key you and you don't leave your body behind you every time you move on. Ruth will keep moving on until she hits a mansion world where they run an IQ on her or a social quotient on her or a spiritual quotient on her or maybe a cultural quotient or maybe a combined quotient. And they said, well, sister, we guess we've got something for you here. And so she goes to school. This may be the third mansion world. I don't know, or the fourth, or the second. And, of course, the first thing she does is learn the language. Because they certainly aren't going to instruct in English. How many, how many English-speaking people do you suppose there are in the mansion world? Well, there are 600 worlds. They only speak English on one of them. And only a fraction of the people from this world speak English. So the first thing you do is learn Satania. And then you can talk to everybody. Eventually, we achieve a status equal to a citizen on, a, on an evolutionary world who is settled in light and life. Then we graduate and go on to Jerusalem. And on Jerusalem, we still keep on growing. 
You know, they believe in differential democracy up there. When you become a Jerusalem citizen, you have one vote. But some folks have a thousand votes. You know why? They're smarter. They're more cultured. They're wiser. And every so often, you get yourself tested in terms of intellectual and spiritual growth, and they keep increasing your franchise. And the more you have on the ball, the heavier the ballot you pack at the polls. And please remember, all during this time, you're working as well as studying. You're thinking, you're feeling, you're acting. You are teaching as well as functioning as a student. You will teach in the Mansion World Schools as well as go through them as a student. And during this time, especially when you get to Uversa, you've got a chance to go hitchhiking. You've got some free time. And you go down to the airport. And you see the schedule of seraphic departures. I wonder if they'll have delays due to weather and <laughs> mechanical failures and so forth. There's a seraphim that's going to world number 203 in the system of Satania. Interesting world, non-breather world. And you file with the dispatcher's office a request to go along with that seraphim, and you get approval. And so you and seraphim for world number 203. And you have a chance to spend some time there as a student visitor. This is how you spend part of your vacations, in visiting the various worlds of the local system of Satania. You get a big charge out of being a graduate, a citizen. Maybe you've got about 600 votes now. You're an old-timer on Jerusalem. You've got a little rank. You're an assistant professor in the schools there. You've been there for a long time. You're getting real satisfied with having achieved something. And you know what happens? One morning, somehow, this is because you're a person, and persons are quirky individuals. Somehow, you get itchy feet. Somehow, you look at all this tremendous achievement, your postgraduate status, and somehow, it begins to shrink. You've been sitting down between rounds too long. You are beginning to get right to move on to the next level of the Paradise Ascent. You're darn tired of being a graduate student. You want to be a freshman again, you know? And this is when you move on. Are we going too fast, Marvin? Fine. Doing great. This is when you move on to Edentia. They never make you move before you're ready. As the papers say, while the ascent is a long one, it's always punctuated by those temporarily stationary periods during which universe horizons stand still and you can taste the sweetness of success. You're successful. You're not always moving up. You stand still and you look back and you say, gee, I made it. I made it. I'm on first base. I'm safe. Then pretty soon you get again to try for second, you know? Vacation regime, I think, is the most typical of the local universe ascent. It's the midpoint. In this respect, it's quite analogous to the major sector regime in the super universe. I think you spend the longest time here. You are a typical Marantian. Not at the physical end, not at the spiritual end, at the mid phase of Marantian development. And what takes place on the constellation? Well, on the mansion worlds, they de-animalized you. When you finish the mansion worlds, you are a true human being. You are completely de-animalized. You're a cultured human being. That's a kind of a civil war we experience on this world. And that's the kind of civil war which is ended by the time we graduate from Jerusalem. We have a unified purpose. And now, they can take such a unified being. And in the constellation regime, 
with its 771 worlds, that's a big lot of worlds, they can really start in, not to spiritualize us, but to socialize us. You know, I, I'm so tickled by these folks that are going to get to be spiritual right away. Are they going to be disappointed? Uh, you see, they're going to teach us real ethics first. And they teach us ethics by having us live with beings who are very non-human. Not nasty and feisty, but just extremely alien. Why are they this, this way? Because the Creator, Son, and the Creative Spirit, with all of their tremendous ingenuity, have created them this way. They're you know, And you know something? This intrigues me. They're midway between material beings and spiritual beings, but they are not Arantia beings. In other words, there's more than one root between matter and spirit. Marantia is just one of at least two roots. <coughs> we have to live with the unification a long time. And I suspect for the time we have lived with them, we can live with anyone. We really come out of this experience with flexible, malleable personalities that were nonetheless individuals. This is not a technique in conformity, but this is a course of sprouts in tolerance, understanding, and give and take. I think this whole ascent increases individuality. I don't think it decreases it. When we've been socialized, then we can graduate from the constellation regime. I've got a hunch that the constellation regime is the height of the aesthetic side of the local universe ascent. To me, it's very significant that they tell the story of the celestial artisans right after the story of the constellations. I think if you've really got a yen to do something, you'll have a chance to do it on the way up to paradise. Of course, if you want to be a Marantia fire chief, I don't think they'll hold you to it if more mature consideration suggests that you don't really want to work in the Marantia Fire Department as a fire chief. But let's say, let's say that you've got tremendous aptitude to be a physicist. And let's say that you've got a hangover yen to be a musician. If you really want to be a musician, I think they'll give you a crack at it. And I think they'll let you work at it until you finally get fed up with being a second-rate musician and decide to shoot for the Melchizedek Prize in physics because you are potentially a first-rate physicist. But that's your choice. I like that idea. They don't push you around. Bill, may I intrude the question? Mm -hmm. What did you mean because you potentially could be a first-rate physicist? I mean this. I think aptitudes vary. And you think they go on? Of course they do. Sex differences are not obliterated. Sure, procreation is limited to this life, but maleness and femaleness is fundamental. And they tell us that even in the core of the finality, the finalities who were once men will think differently from the finalities who were once women. They'll continue to stimulate each other. This I like. I would hate to be a neuter. How do you gals feel? Yeah, you know, I, I, I will always remember I was a man, not a woman. And I will always remember that you gals were women and not men. <coughs> Our aptitudes vary. If you'll recall, in this connection, there is a grand statement it's in, it's in the paper on the celestial artisans. Yes, yeah, section 8 on page 507. Mortal aspirations and Marantia achievements. Let's just read a couple of lines from this. Many ambitions to excel 
which tantalize mortals in the flesh will not persist with these same mortals in the Marantia career. Nevertheless, those things which you so earnestly long to do on earth and which circumstances so persistently denied you, if after acquiring true multi insight in the Marantia career, you still desire to do, then will you most certainly be granted every opportunity to satisfy your long-cherished desires. And then the following paragraph, it discusses uh, how we equalize intellectually before we graduate from this local universe, how we equalize spiritually when we enter the core of the finality, and how having attained spiritual and intellectual equalization, we now discover that we have a, we are up against a new differential, an absinthe differential. But equalization does not mean identity of aptitude, merely equality of horsepower. We will still, some of us, be artists, some writers, some physicists, some legal-minded persons, some better teachers than others, some better executives than others. When we graduate from <coughs> Edentia as unified, socialized Marantians, we will embark on the Salvington regime. And it is the purpose of this regime to spiritualize us. This is how we graduate from the Marantia to the spirit level of development. And it appears to me that our principal training takes place on the worlds of the Melchizedeks, the Lenanadeks, the Verandadeks, and the life carriers. The great physical research laboratories of the local universe are on the worlds of the life carriers. On the Melchizedek worlds, we have a grand roundup of our whole training today. On the Lenanandek worlds, we study the problems of the coordination of executive rulings in the 10,000 systems of the local universe. On the Verandadek worlds, we become students of the problems of legislative coordination, coordinating the legislative enactments of the 100 constellations. On the life carrier worlds, I suspect we get a good course in, of sprouts in biology and in physics and so on. And finally we move on to Salvington. Don't tell us much about what we do on Salvington. But they do tell us about the function of a very interesting group of seraphim. <coughs> Up on Salvington, will benefit from the ministry of a group of supreme seraphim called universe orientators. These are the true friends and postgraduate counselors of all those ascending creatures who are pausing for the last time on Salvington in their universe of origin as they stand on the brink of the spirit adventure stretching out before them in the vast super-universe of Arvanta. Look, guys, we're getting ready to leave home. This is real something. So far, we've operated in Michael's universe. Now we're about to leave it for a greater universe. <clears throat> and at such a time, many an ascender has a feeling which mortals could understand only by comparison with the human emotion of nostalgia. Behind lie the realms of achievement, realms grown familiar by long service and Marantia attainment. Ahead lies the challenging mystery of a greater and vaster universe. It is the task of the universe orientators to facilitate the passage of the ascending pilgrims from the attained to the unattained level of universe service to help these pilgrims in making those kaleidoscopic adjustments in the comprehension of meanings and values 
inherent in the realization that a first stage spirit being stands not at the end and climax of the local universe Marantia ascent, but rather at the very bottom of the long ladder of spiritual ascent to the Universal Father on Paradise. Again, an end is a beginning. And so we shove off from Salvington. For the minor sector of Ensa. And there on this minor sector, as first stage spirit beings, who are our instructors? High spiritual beings? No, not at all. The associate power directors. And our subject is the physical constitution of the universe of universes. Here, I think, is where we get a real mess of mathematics. Here is where we really study automatons and the like. The artists and all. Huh? The artists. The artists and all, sure. This is required. Here is where we get a real course of sprouts in, I think, the operations of paradise, the functions of the force organizers, the machinations of the power centers, the master physical controllers, the power directors, and so on. And I fancy we don't have a chance to pass on until we have taught this course to our juniors. Yeah. You remember, mm -hmm. all the way through, mm -hmm. you pass the roughest final examination you can pass. You're not graded until you demonstrate your willingness and your ability to teach the course. And as you folks who've experimented with teaching this book know, that's the roughest exam you can undertake, isn't it? Well, one day we'll graduate from the capital of the minor sector of ENSA, and we will move on to the capital of the major sector of Splendon. And here we begin our intellectual growth in the super-universe regime. And here we depart from the normal pattern. So far, we have been students with residential status on just one unit, one capital of one system, constellation, local universe, and minor sector. But when we graduate from the major sector of Splendon, we don't move on into Uversa. We move over to the next major sector. And we move successively through all ten of the major sectors of the super-universe of Arvanda. We don't get off this level until the entire thirty perfections of days have certified our progress. If you want to get a feel for the super-universe ascent, I think what you ought to read is the story of the ministering spirits of the super-universes, particularly the secondary and the tertiary Sekhanafim. The secondary Sekhanafim, well, the primary Sekhanafim worked for the ancients of days, and we don't have much to do with them. But the secondary Sekhanafim work for their associates, divine counselors, the perfectors of wisdom, the universal censors. We do have to do with them. They're the ones, you know, that depict wisdom, philosophy, uh, cooperation, counsel, <coughs> the sheer joy of living, the satisfaction of service, and the discerners of spirits who are people. But then the tertiary Sakonathim work with the ascendant coordinates of the divine counselors, mighty messengers, those high in authority, those without name and number. These are the folks that we come in contact with. <coughs> These significance of origins are not only concerned with judgment, they're concerned with ethics and relationship. These memories of mercy are not only concerned with 
giving evidence in the judicial system, but in teaching mercy. The imports of time not only advise the adjudicating authorities, did Ruth Burton have time enough or not to make a decision, they also teach the ascenders concerning the active and the passive use of time, work and play. The solemnity of trust not only appraises our trustworthiness, but also teaches us trustworthiness. The sanctity of service is in part engaged in teaching us with the importance of service. When we have completed our intellectual education in the super-universe regime, when all 30 of the perfections of days have signed our report card, then we graduate to Uversa. And for the first time, we encounter Havona beings. There's an overlap. Havona servitals are working out on Uversa and its satellites. Here's where we attempt to write our PhD thesis in the University of Time and Space. And I suspect before we actually graduate, we have to do original pieces of work, besides doing all the prescribed work. I can imagine a good subject for an original PhD thesis. Let's say a group venture. It would take too long for one person to do it. But a group of graduates might decide to write a thesis appraising the bestowal careers of the Michael Sons in the super universe of Arvanda or maybe the major sector of Splendid. What could you learn from an analysis of these careers? That would be an interesting thesis, wouldn't it? Or, here'd be another interesting one. Why is it that the Michaels don't always bestow themselves in the same way? You know there's only one required bestowal for each Michael son, that's the seventh. That's prescribed. Our universe sovereign bestowed himself as a Melchizedek, but not as a Verandadek, as a Lananandek, but not as a brilliant evening star or an archangel, as an Adam, but not as a Susatia, a Univitatia, as a Seraphim, but not as a Cherubim, or a midway creature. Don't you suppose that in other local universes they hit some of these life levels which Michael omitted? He can't hit them all. He elected to use three of his pistols in the guise of an ascending mortal, physical, moral, and spiritual. That left only four for other types of universe life. Don't you suppose that other Michaels and other local universes have different ideas? Wouldn't that be an interesting study? Why were the bestowals different in this local universe as compared with that? Well, there comes a day when we graduate from the University of Time and Space. I don't think they kick us out right away. I think they let us walk around as with graduate status, you know. Uh, maybe by that time, the local, our local universe will be settled in light and light. It may take that long to get there. I don't think so. If we came from a local universe settled in light and life, which has membership in the super universe government, Nevadon is like Hawaii. We're just a territory in our Bantan. We have yet to be admitted to the Union. We will be admitted when we're settled in light and life. Such a citizen, though, might serve a tour of duty in the Universal Legislature, in one of the houses, which passes the laws governing the super-universe of Urbanda. But there finally comes a day when we take off. And we take off with a transport sekonofim, because that long flight to Havona well, a seraphim just doesn't have a big enough gas tank. 
she'd run out of gas. She hasn't got jets enough. It takes a Sikonofim to go from Uversa to Havona. A DC-3 just won't make it. It takes a DC-7. <clears throat> and we land on the pilot world of the outer circuit of Havona. And now, time is no longer of significance. Up until now, time has been of relative significance. From here on, there are no classes. Up until now, we've advanced sometimes as individuals, sometimes as classes. But from here on in, we advance only as an individual. And we're accompanied by three people. By a graduate guide who meets us and who stays with us throughout the Havona ascent. By the associated servital attached to that guide. And by whatever secondary superdifim is assigned to us on a given Havona circuit. We'll have seven different secondary superdifims going through Havona. And you'll recall they, they, they read us out of the fine print in our diploma that we got from Uversa. You remember it is hereby certified that this individual is graduated, you know, maybe cum laude, magna summa. But at any rate, it says in there in the fine print, with a seal of our on it, we hereby certify that this ascendant pilgrim has learned to get fat on disappointment to feast on uncertainty, to invigorate in the presence of, in other words, we have really developed the tensile strength of this pilgrim. This is a tough citizen. We've tested. Then they tell us it's on this outer circuit of Havona. You know, we're real tough characters. But it's on the outer circuit of Havona that for the first time we discover what real effort means. We're freshmen in the University of Eternity. That's a hell of a sight more difficult than the University of Time and Space. This is a real rough school. This is a really rough school. On the outer belt of Havona worlds, we get a primary course of sprouts on what this is all about. You'll recall they tell us how many times they break down the subdivisions. I suspect if we had normal textbooks for each subject that this house wouldn't be built big enough to hold them. This is the elementary course in the book. And when we are through with the outer Havona circuit, we're introduced to the master spirit of the super universe of our origin. This happens to be Master Spirit number seven. This is the high being that we meet in the course of our inward ascent. And then we move into the sixth circuit. And this is the closest approach we make to the Supreme Being in the entire Paradise Ascent. If our present universe age...